This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ravel's Big Superbug, AFV Club's M1 Howitzer, IBG's Crusader, Ravel's Porsche 928, and Wingnut Wing's Gotha G1. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show that gives you a look inside the latest kits and more. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We have a packed show for you today, starting with Ravel's long awaited 132nd scale Super Hornet. Based on the FA 18, the larger Super Hornet entered service with the U.S. Navy in 2001. The fuselage is divided into several parts, including the upper section from the front of the leading edge extensions, incorporating much of the wings. Fine panel lines and rivets mark much of the surface. The front is split in halves on the vertical axis with engraved hinges and hatches. The actual nose cone is a single slide molded part. The underside features open vents and scoops and separate lower halves for the wings. Speaking of the wings, the kit provides outer wings in halves that can be posed extended or folded with keyed hinges. The wings leading and trailing edge flaps are posable through optional parts and actuators. The stabilators are also posable and the rudders are designed to be movable. The fuselage sandwiches full intakes connected to the jet pipes with two-part front fans and afterburners. Optional parts allow for the variable nozzles to be displayed fully open or narrowed. Frames attached to the detailed intake exteriors dress up the main gear bays. The nose gear bay walls attach underneath the cockpit floor. The complex nose gear and mains are provided in multiple parts with detailed wheels and the inside of the gear doors. Cockpit detail comprises a tub with controls molded on the consoles instrument panel to be detailed with decal screens and dials, control stick, a multi-part ejection seat with molded belts, and a nice panel shroud. The posable canopy has a faint mold seam to remove, but it is thin and clear. Other clear parts include the HUD glass, lights, and the targeting pod sensor head. Other options provided in the kit are a deployed boarding ladder and early or late ECS fans. Let's talk about things that hang off the Hornet. The kit provides two 480 gallon fuel tanks and a pair each of AIM-120, AIM-9M, and AIM-9X air-to-air missiles, and their respective launch rails, as well as a pair of GBU-12, GBU-31, and GBU-38 bombs, and an AN-ASQ-228 targeting pod. Decals provide stencils for the weapons and aircraft, in addition to markings for two Super Hornets, a colorful subject from VX-9, an air test and evaluation squadron at China Lake, and a low-vis aircraft from VFA-105, the Gunslingers, aboard USS Truman in 2010. There's a lot of plastic in this box with several nice build options. Looks to be worth the wait. Next up, we have AFE Club's 135th scale M1 8-inch howitzer. This American artillery piece was towable by vehicles, fired a 203 millimeter shell, and served U.S. forces in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. As well as with many other nations in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. The gun was redesignated the M115, and it's under that name that versions of this have appeared before from AFE Club. But this kit has new parts to backdate it for World War II and make it more accurate. The body of the gun barrel comes in halves that match the gun cradle. The muzzle end of the barrel is turned aluminum, and it appears to be longer than the similar part that came with the previous kits. The tubes for the prominent equilibrators are also metal. Also new for the gun are the breech with separate internal pieces and a posable breech block that gets clad with separate threaded parts. Unused optional breech and barrel parts hint that other guns are forthcoming. The two-part gun cradle fits into a nicely molded upper carriage with detailed elevation and traverse controls and new sight parts. The carriage mounts on a multi-part base that allows the gun to rotate, to which are mounted the hinged trails with optional spades. An extension under the gun mounts a pair of axles on leaf springs and controls. The rims, featuring sharply molded bolts, hubs, and lightning hulls, are new in this kit, as are the early commercial-style tires in place of the M115's non-directional military tires. That pretty much gives you everything you need to pose the gun in firing position. If you want to show it being towed, the kit provides a new limber with rotating plate including underside, details, and axle with leaf springs. Gun cleaning tools and a marker light to hang from the barrel finish the setup. Brake lines for gun and limber are supplied in flexible vinyl. No decals are provided, but you can have your M1 in any color you want as long as it's olive drab. That's a nice looking update to this artillery piece. Sticking with ground vehicles for now, let's take a look at IBG's 172nd scale Crusader Mark I. More than 5,000 of these British cruiser tanks were built in early World War II and most served in North Africa. 
The body of IBG's Crusader comprises a lower hull with tiny molded rivets, upper hull with rivets, handles, hinges, and latches on the engine deck, rear plate with open louvers, and glasses plate. The latter gets a separate driver's cover and a machine gun turret. Other hull details include full-length fenders, boxes for the engine deck and fenders, and a rear-mounted fuel tank. The suspension is simple but nicely detailed for the scale with separate inner road wheels, idlers, and sprockets that attach to a single piece that incorporates the outer wheels and tracks. The turret is split into lower and upper sections with fine surface detail, with a separate hatch, front plate and mantlet, and a one-piece gun barrel. A small photo etched metal fret supplies optional sand skirts for the rear of the fenders with separate straps. A small decal sheet and color diagrams give markings for three British tanks in North Africa, two overall sand, and one in the contour scheme. I really like the fine line this kit threads between detail and ease of assembly. Most impressive if you like small scale armor. From Scale Auto Magazine, it's Car Corner, our occasional look at new automotive kits. Welcome to Scale Auto's Car Corner. I'm Tim Kidwell, editor of Scale Auto Magazine. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We're going to pop the top on Ravel Germany's 1 16th scale Porsche 928. So this very 1980s car was released, the model of it, in 1980. And from what we can tell, it hasn't been reissued since 1981. The body is mostly a single part with sharp recessed lines for the doors and hatchback. The front with open radiator grow below the bumper and rear clips are separate as is the hood. The latter covers a V8 engine with a block split in half with a separate top, head covers, fan, intake manifold, timing chain cover, belts, exhaust manifolds, air intakes and cleaner, and radiator. The power plant sits on a sump molded with the front suspension and connects to the rear axle via a drive shaft that along with the mufflers and exhaust mount to the one piece underbody. Interior detail comprises a tub with molded carpet, door panels, and rear seat. There are also two part bucket seats, a dash with center console, a separate instrument cluster, and steering wheel. The smoky clear parts include a large part incorporating the windshield and rear windows. The door windows and sunroof will be open. Other clear parts are the head, tail, and marker lights. Soft vinyl tires marked as Goodyear Eagles with decent tread wrap around the distinctive Porsche rims. One of the highlights of this re-release is the decal sheet, which provides instrument faces, interior trim, including the psychedelic seat pattern, engine placards, Porsche badging, brake details, and a wide selection of license plates. While some aspects of this kit may look a bit dated, the decal sheet and its long period of unavailability should be enough to tempt you to pick it up, especially if you're a fan of the 928. Look for a detailed build review of it in an upcoming issue of Scale Auto Magazine. Thanks for watching Car Corner. I'm Tim Kibble, the editor of Scale Auto Magazine, and visit ScaleAutomag.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. Finally, here's the latest tour de force from Wingnut Wings, a 132nd scale Gotha G1. This early war biplane was used for defensive patrols, reconnaissance, and rarely bombing. Only 20 were built, and they proved vulnerable to faster fighters when they reached the front in late 1915. This big plane and its stable mate, the float-equipped UWD, are Wingnut Wings' way of celebrating its 10th anniversary. Typical of the manufacturer's other World War I kits, the big wings are single pieces on each side of the plane with fine rib stitching and preformed hulls for rigging. All of the control surfaces are separate. The lower wing, which runs full span on the Gotha, has a separate center section with the mounts for the two Benz BZ3 engines that have separate cylinders, sump, and manifolds. They fit into engine bearers with firewalls inside multi-part nacelles with optional fronts and optional radiators, exhaust manifolds, and props. The long fuselage, it'll be more than 12 inches on the finished model, is split into the front crew section and the rear section with upper decking and the lower tub with stitching outside and frames and rigging molded inside. The crew compartment comprises a two-part floor, several bulkheads joined by side frames with pilot controls and an instrument panel, pilot seat, commander's documents up front, and optional 20-pound bombs in racks. Modifying the cockpit combing part makes room for the later production machine gun cupolas, in addition to the front pulpit gun ring. The kit provides a variety of guns, including LMG-14 Parabellum and IMG-08 Spandau, and a 2cm Becker cannon experimentally fitted to at least one Gotha. In addition to the internal bombs that could be dropped through a cage extending from the nose, some Gothas carried bombs and racks under the wings. The solid landing gear has two wheels on each multi-part structure.
The various struts are very thin and should look good with rigging. A small photo etched metal fret provides machine gun cooling jackets, gun sights, and a seat belt. Cartograph decals and color diagrams provide markings for five aircraft, all in variations of the German early war field gray scheme. This looks like another exciting and well-engineered release from Wingnut Wings. Look for reviews of the Gotha, Super Hornet, Howitzer, and Crusader in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can find more new products in the September issue on sale now. Also, check out the fall edition of our special issue, Damaged, which includes a great story about building the Tumblr Batmobile from Mobius. You can order this issue separate from your regular FSM subscription at combacopystore.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I see you shiver with Antissa. Okay, this, there's a typo here. The posable canopy has a faint mold seam to remove, but it is thin and clear. Mm -hmm. The eye is thin and no, clear. I, I thin and clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Tinder profile. I thin and clear. <laughs> and I'll just let that scene. sit there. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> swipe right, swipe right. <laughs>